Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Our next speaker, Patty Thor, is a past district director and founder of several businesses and a nonprofit. As a leader in many areas, she realizes that humor eases many of the challenges of leadership. But many of us don't know what humor is or don't know that humor is a learned skill. Patty uses the six humor constructs found in the Toastmasters Entertaining Speaker Advanced Manual and adds a few more to create Smuppets. S M U P P E T S. You will learn multiple ways to create humor for your next leadership role or everyday conversation. Please welcome Patty Thor as she helps us race towards success with humor, also known as. Succeed with Smuppets. Patty Thor. Thank you so much, Russell. Welcome, everyone. Yeah. Did you have a great lunch? Yeah. I did. <laughs> OK, everybody, get a little bit of energy going. Let's go move those arms. Wiggle a little bit. I don't want anybody falling asleep. If I see you asleep, I'm going to send my mic runner out to ask you a question, <laughs> right? That'll keep them awake. That'll keep them awake. So, race to success with humor. It didn't work. <laughs> there we go. We had to switch technologies a whole bunch of times. So, leadership skills, active listening, having difficult conversations, and giving and receiving feedback. They're great leadership skills, right? We need to know them, right? Toastmasters makes leaders, right? You want to learn these skills, right? You're not going to learn them in this session. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. These are great skills. You're going to learn them elsewhere, but not here. Would you agree that in all these leadership skills that humor helps? if nothing else, but to laugh at yourself. Did you know that humor can be learned? Who knew, right? How many already knew that humor could be learned? Yeah, not too many. Well, you learned it from me. <laughs> as, as Lindy and I would say, that's cheating. <laughs> It's being smart. There you go. Whoops, what's happening? OK, yeah, they might want to see that too. What happened? Now we went through a whole bunch of screens here. OK, so do you need help adding humor to whatever you do? Yeah, yeah. Need some help? <laughs> yeah. I know, you told me they needed help. You started it. Well, in that case, the Smuppets are here. Yeah! Woo! This is my team from last night, by the way. Who else was on my team? Smuppets gone wild. There we go. And uh, let me give, give, give kudos to our newfound club growth director, newly elected club growth director, Kathy Wolf, with the winning answer last night in trivia contest. So that tells me she's going to be a great club growth director. Because she know what, Tro Joe versus the volcano? Yep. There you go. So kudos to her. Smuppets are here. But what the heck? Smuppets, right? What are Smuppets? Does anybody remember the entertaining speaker manual? Give me a woo-hoo, woo-hoo. OK. Did any of you do it? Woo-hoo, woo-hoo. We got a few. OK. Well, there's a little tiny screen print there. I don't expect you to read that. You're not supposed to read it. But on page 13 
of this manual. There we go, right there, page 13 in the actual manual. There are six ways to construct humor. Did you know that? Now, exaggeration, understatement, twisted definition, pun, parody, and misunderstandings. Please repeat. So some of you could read it. The ones way in the back can't even see what I'm talking about. Not exactly something that you're going to memorize, right, or have as a tool. So I sat and played with that. Wow. I was like, hmm, there's got to be an acronym somewhere, right, in this. The only one that I could come up with that was memorable is misunderstandings, understatement, pun parody, exaggeration, and twisted definition. What does that spell? Muppet. Muppet. Well, you can't have, no, it spells Muppet, singular. You cannot have one Muppet, right? That's not possible. But, <laughs> wait, we need to catch that on mic. You can't have one Muppet. That's not possible. No. <laughs> That's for you Zoom folks. So I added slapstick. And then I thought about it a little bit more, and it's like, some of these lawyers in the group are like, eh, Muppets, that's a copyrighted trademark. Trademark, sorry, trademarked. Might not want to do that. So I put another S in there, and now it's Muppets. Totally different, totally unique. <laughs> Not anything to do with those Jim Henson furry things. Okay, so this is what I put the slapstick up front. Physical humor, because it's kind of different than all the other things. The other things are word related. Slapstick is the physical humor, like the falls, things like that. I'm gonna go through each of these. And what I want you to do is get out your handouts and this is one where I'm going to encourage you to look at your handouts during the meeting. As I go through these, there's a first page that has these really boring, really mundane, really mundane, dry stories. They're supposed to be. Because what I want you to do as we're going through these, just kind of glance over these stories, see if you can come up with a way to add a little humor to them, add a little interest, add characters, add activities. One lady just gets on a bus sits on the bus, gets off the bus, goes to work. Kind of boring. So how could you use Smuppets to rev up that story, make it more fun, make it more interesting? So that's your assignment. So yes, I get that you're going to be listening out of one ear, your brains are going to be working, but you kinesthetic learners are going to come away going, I got this. The rest of you can watch the replay. Okay, so time to help. I just did that one. You've got your papers, and now, here we go, slapstick. Now, most of you know what slapstick is, right? It's the physical humor, comedy, exaggerated movements. Here is some of my favorites. <laughs> okay, so some of you might recognize. See this fella? Lower right, bottom left. Anybody recognize him? Here, nice and loud. Where is this going? In? Oh, okay, you got the year. Man, I wasn't even going for that. Darren LaCroix, LaCroix World Championship of Public Speaking speech called Ouch. And he actually did a, it's called a Pratt fall. It's a fall that's designed to look like, oh my gosh, he got hurt. But nothing. He, he, he fell on purpose. Stunt doubles do it, obviously, all the time. Anybody ever seen Dick Van Dyke? <laughs> that man falls everywhere. He's in his 90s. He doesn't fall as much, but he still dances, by the way. Then top right, that was America's Got Talent. When they got on stage, these three ladies, they said that the one on the left had never performed with them before. Their regular person couldn't make it. You could see all the judges going, <gasps> Oh no. Like no and Simon even said, You've never performed with them before? No. They just needed me to fill in. Oh. Okay. 
well, they started, and everybody's going this way, and she's going that way, and they start going this way, and she comes right at them with her instrument going the wrong way. Bam! That one, middle one turns around, falls down, comes back up. Her nose is all bloodied. <laughs> she put some makeup on when she was down there. And, of course, they're scooting around stage, misstepping all over the place. Next thing you know, skirts are coming off. Wigs are flying off. It was hysterical. That is the epitome of slapstick. Look it up. America's Got Talent. Nora Desmond here in the middle. Who's old enough to remember Carol Burnett? Nora Desmond. <laughs> Look at those eyes. She was a silent movie star. She always had the big eyes. As she looked everywhere. Her movements were slow and deliberate. Because in the silent movies, you couldn't move fast because it got blurry. <laughs> and if anybody noticed her dress, it's filled with two tennis balls that hung to about here, <laughs> <laughs> which was also satirical. So that was Nora Desmond, Carol Burnett, Tim Conway. Yes, the dentist scene. Who's ever seen that one before? Yes, I laughed just thinking about that one. So in this one, Tim Conway is playing a dentist that's new. He actually got out a book to figure out how to pull a tooth. So he's reading a book with his patient sitting right there. He hands the hypodermic needle to the patient and asks him to hold it. As he's finished reading the book, he says, reach for the, hy reach for the hypodermic needle. He reaches over. Of course, you can see what's about to happen. Boom. The rest of that skit, his hand was... Not, look, she's laughing. She remembers it. His hand was numb. Of course, later on, he's trying to do something else and still trying to numb the patient, stabs his own leg. So now he's walking like this and trying to use the instruments and trying to get them to work. <laughs> Harvey Corman is busting up laughing, the patient. He, he, he can't keep a straight face around Tim for nothing. And eventually Tim Conway starts busting up. It's hysterical. Again, look it up on YouTube. It's worth the watch. So those are some examples of slapstick humor. We can learn from these masters. Oh, your turn to try. I fed my toddler a lemon for the first time. Okay, big deal. What? Right, right. Now, your turn. Mimic the child's pucker face. Crazy eyes, body shivers. Come on, everybody, let's go. Ooh, that lemon was so sour. Oh, Oh, come on. Yeah. There you go. Good. Who was eating the lemons? I see some sour pusses that weren't eating lemons. <laughs> Misunderstandings. When you misinterpret words, phrases, oops. <laughs> Exercise, I thought you said extra fries. <laughs> so I said, sign me up for another. The king of comedy on misunderstanding, Abbott and Costello. Does anybody here not know who's on first? Everybody does? Give me a wave if you know it. Who's on first? Okay, Abbott and Costello. Here we go. Somebody's got it memorized. So for those of you online that don't know what who's on first is, it's a skit by Abbott and Costello. They performed it over 1,100 times in their career, so they got pretty good at it. <coughs> but Abbott is the manager, and Lou Costello is asking him what the players' names are. Well, Abbott just came out and said, they've got the weirdest player names these days. You know, and he mentioned a few Dixie Dean, some real players uh, back in the day. So Costello says, you know, who are they? And he says, well, who's on first? What's on second? I don't know who's on third. Well, yeah, but what, the, what are the players' names? Who's on first? What's on second? Who's repeating it? I don't know who's on third. And it goes through the whole thing. One is asking the question, who? The other is answering the question, who? Big misunderstanding, funny to watch. So can you make a misunderstanding happen on your papers? Hmm, think about that. Here's one. 
On the first day of middle school, my son Stephen was about to ride his skateboard down the stairs in front of the school when his teacher reprimanded him. Stephen, you can't ride your skateboard down those stairs. To which my son replied, I've been practicing all summer. I think I can. <laughs> and anybody that knows Stephen knows that's the truth. <laughs> Understatement. This is where you downplay the situation. The whole house is just blown up. The tornado is looming at you, and you're like, oh, what a glorious day. There's some movies like that, aren't there? So your cat knocked over your vase, broke your lamp, and shredded your curtains. Oh, she's such a good kitty. How many cat moms are like that? <laughs> yeah. We see you too. <laughs> Here's another understatement. I walked out into the driveway with my teenage daughter and noticed that my car was smashed. I said, did anything unusual happen when you drove the car yesterday? Uh, probably not the response most parents would have. <laughs> pun. Hey, everybody knows a pun, right? Puns are punny. They are the dad jokes. They are the fifth grade jokes. A pun is a word play for words that sound similar, right? So why don't s scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything. <laughs> Whoa! Heckler's in the audience. I love it. Okay, here's another one. I told my husband over breakfast. Karen wants to marry Josh. He's tall, handsome, and quite wealthy. But he's so stubborn. But instead of saying he's so stubborn, he has a will of his own. Synonym, right? Still same story. And the husband says, yeah, and he's trying to have it made out to her. Parody. Everybody's seen parody movies. Here's a few of our famous ones. Now, I love this one in the middle here from Spaceballs. That's a parody of a parody. So what is this parody of? Come on, who can shout it out? Wizard of Oz. That's right. So when you saw that, you all started laughing again because there's the Wizard of Oz right there in the middle of space. Here's another parody. See if anybody can recognize where this one comes from. My neighbor is trying to lose weight, but he has a weakness for desserts. That's kind of boring. My neighbor is trying to lose weight, but he likes to eat his cake and have yours too. Who's that come from? Anybody recognize it? Parody on Marie Antoinette. Let them eat cake. And then exaggeration. Everybody's seen exaggeration where you're, everything is big and it's overstated. I was so skinny. Oh, so that's the next one. My boss is so organized, he has scheduled for time to blink. <laughs> Any of us guilty of that level of detail? <laughs> I see a couple hands. I see a couple. I'm not saying anything. But when I was a child, I was so skinny, which helped plan hide and seek. I could hide behind the flagpole the telephone pole, and even my grandfather's cane. I have since grown up. I, you know, I spent years trying to stay in shape until I realized that, hey, round is a shape. And then twisted definition. This is where you have one word or phrase, but you use it in a odd way. For example, Worker says, we have a team meeting this afternoon. Co-workers, what's the meeting for? It's for a bunch of us to take minutes, but no one is allowed to leave for hours. <laughs> How many have been at those meetings? <laughs> Another one is, our project is in trouble. We'd better call a consultant. Yeah, the engineer said, that's who you call in when you need someone to blame. And then the last S, we're going to say it again, but we're going to say it again and again and again. Still think about your little stories, and what you can add to them. This one is the callback. The callback. Now, this has been used many times. It's probably it was used many times already today. 
Is Don Michael in the room? No, he's not. But I heard he was changing his name to Bob. <laughs> okay, that's a callback to a previous conference. The ch people who chuckled were at that conference. So you need to be at the next conference so you don't miss the next callbacks. Okay, got that? <laughs> My neighbor is always trying to stay married, but he has a weakness for women. My other neighbor, remember I had the one neighbor that was eating desserts? My other neighbor is always trying to stay married, but he wants to have his wife. He wants to keep his wife and have yours, too. <laughs> there we go. And then say it again with three questions. This is one I learned from a professional speaker. You ask a very specific, specific question, and then one more general, and then one, like, absurdly, completely beyond. But they still have to have a thread. They have to tie together somehow. So it's the same noun, same verb, same theme. So let me ask you all a question. <coughs> Who here has ever played college basketball? Anybody? Oh, we got one back there, Russell. Nice and tall. That makes sense. Anybody ever play basketball at all? Sandlot, there we go. Has anybody ever seen a ball? <laughs> OK. That is the example. And you see how they tied together one very specific college ball. We got one person. Ever played basketball? A few more. Ever seen a ball? Who hasn't seen a ball? Right? And we didn't even call it a basketball. So this works in other countries as well. And that's the rule of threes is similar to the questions, but they're not questions. So you hear that a lot of times in you know, this, this, and this. We, we do that all the time, not just for comedy, but uh, somebody said courage, charisma, something else. There was three C's together, right? Um, my example, my morning routine involves coffee, breakfast, and wondering how it's already lunchtime. <laughs> so say it again. Bob Allison said, he came up with a, some joke ideas, and the guy that was working with him said, too corny, too obvious, 2.30. <laughs> Time to go, right? Don't care. So these are the smuppets. Now what I want us to do is actually put them into practice so that you can race to success with humor using smuppets. Some great advice to speakers, all you speakers, from Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Be sincere, be brief, and be seated. OK, now what we're going to do, that can, that can stop sharing. I want everybody to take a couple minutes, you at home. Um, Chris, can you drop the other file in the chat? Do you have the other file? Yes, of the of the homework. And then work on, on any people at home, if you want to take any of the jokes that we had, any other conversations, try using some smuppets to amp up any stories that you have. Make them a little funnier. And you know what? It's OK to be vulnerable. We just learned that, right? <laughs> it feels scary. It feels fearful. But everybody who speaks up, is really courageous. And we won't know the difference that you're scared. Does anybody have, if any of my humorists have any suggestions on any of the Muppets, some Muppets that you've added? Give you a couple minutes. Want to use your So if you're online on Zoom, you can use any story, kind of a boring, mundane story of your own. That's all this on these these uh, other PDFs. And then just try to come up with some ways that you can use the Smuppets to add a little bit of humor or invent your own story. I don't care. That's, that's fine, too. We just want to put into practice what we're learning.
<laughs> By the way, this, this is why comedy writers get paid the big bucks. Yeah, it's a lot harder than it looks. You see the comedians come off with the jokes, and it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it when your audience is laughing. So while you're continuing to write, I'm going to interrupt you and talk over you, but concentrate on what you're doing or listen in, whichever you want to do. There were, okay, does anybody not, okay, everybody knows the story, The Three Little Pigs. Yeah, yeah you do. Yeah, I do. All right. And. I didn't ask you to sell it. <laughs> but thanks anyways. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I love the courage. That was great. The, th the story of the three little pigs. Well, one of these ladies over here in this fuchsia shirt over here, this beautiful fuchsia shirt, as her number seven speech that she ever did, she started a speech craft with us. So on it was week nine because she was doing a makeup with us. She did a parody called The Three Little Figs. Oh, <laughs> she had a bag of figs. There were three in there. And she's like, oh, I could do the story of The Three Little Figs. It was so funny because she did a parody on the whole thing. So parodies seem to work best in longer running things because you could tie more things. And the names she used rhymed with, oh, Larry, Moe, and Curly. <laughs> so she put in another parody yet in her story and that was only speech number seven and I said that is a good seed for a humor speech contest speech so if you ever hear something titled the three little figs you heard it here first that was Jackie Hirschberger does anybody have anything they want to share yet you got a lot of stuff written that's yeah. good anything you want to share oh uh, yeah of course they are the there you go that's right I was going to make sure it was on, that you didn't just come up. There you go. There's the camera right back there. Look at our Zoom folks. All right. This could be dangerous, by the way, giving him a microphone. Uh -huh. I don't know. I don't need it. <laughs> yeah, the Zoom <laughs> folks can't hear you that far away. Yes, they can. <laughs> <sighs> John woke up. <laughs> He wandered into the bathroom, looked into the mirror, thought to himself, which teeth should I brush this morning? <laughs> and he heard his dentist say, well, only the ones you want to keep. <laughs> A little bit later, he got into his car to drive to work. The, uh, I believe from our earlier speaker, in a hurry. <laughs> That's as far the, as I got. The aggressive driver. The aggressive driver. There you go. Okay. Give him a hand. Did that not show courage, right? Work in progress. So what, what forms of humor did you see him use? Slapstick, right? The exaggerated stretch. So the exaggeration, comma, slapstick. Callbacks. Parody. Anybody else? That's what I caught, too. Very good. Anybody else want to give theirs a try? Come on. Be courageous. Be vulnerable. Kathy, right there, Kathy. That's right. Yeah. Our <laughs> club growth director elect. Special spot here. Yes, so you can see that camera right back there. Say hi to everybody on Zoom. Hi, everybody on Zoom. Hi, everybody in the room. Yay. So I had, I had to go to the doctor's office the other day, and I've been there at least four times before, but it doesn't matter because I never remember where that place is. I drove there. I had my GPS, I'm like, it's okay, it'll take me there. And it took me to the first turn I needed to make and left me in the maze. Because not only did I not remember where my doctor's office was, I forgot what it looked like. I just remembered I always hated going there because it's hidden. 
I did finally find it. I got in the building. I thought, well, I remember we're on the fourth floor. And I go to the elevator, and there's only two buttons. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Someone else got on the elevator. I'm like, I'm just going to step out. <laughs> Look that address back up. Oh, hey, I'm only on the second floor. Good news. I did have two buttons. So I thought, okay, well, that's got to be the hardest part of this event, right? Surely I'm okay to go now. I got in there. I'm running late because, you know, can't find the office. And she says, oh, you're good. Just sit down. I'm like, I don't have to do paperwork. Yay. I was excited. I should not have been. It turned out, instead of getting to fill out the papers, which are actually pretty easy for me, um, I had to do a pop oral quiz with a nurse who doesn't listen well. First question, do you have a family history of, I don't know, some kind of random cancer? And I'm like, no, I don't have a family history, period. And I even said period. And she looks at me, oh, great, you don't have a family history of this cancer. I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't know my family history. And she's like, what? I'm like, I'm adopted. I don't know my family history. She goes, so, you know, we can skip all those questions. She's like, oh, great. She goes, how about you personally? Like, do you have a history of something? And, I'm, and we talked about that for a minute. Third question. Do you have a family history <laughs> of some new disease? And I looked at her. <laughs> she looked at me expectantly. And I'm like, I really don't have a new answer since 30 seconds ago. <laughs> so I could go with, I don't know. <laughs> it was a long day. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Give her a hand. I gave you those handouts so you can take them home, practice them, add them to your next speech, impromptu speech, or just personal conversations. Practice those Muppets. As you get good at them, you can insert them everywhere. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for participating. Great job. Bye-bye. Mr. Drake, I'll run to you. Okay. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't, right. mean, I didn't mean to trip you. <laughs> oh, jeez. My goodness. All right. Well done, Patty. Well done. <laughs> We have 50-50 raffle and raffle tickets with Addie, so please see her at some point today. How much are they? How much are tickets? You get one for each for five dollars. One for five. Five for ten. Fifteen for twenty. One for five. Five for ten. They want you to complete the twenty questions first. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. All right. So. Our next step, our next session, will be the International Speech Contest. The contest officials will stay here. The contestants will go over to the other room, and you all have a break until about 2.30. How's that? Super. <laughs>